For this tutorial, we will be using Loopity Loops yarn made by the Big Twist Company. Uh, I purchased this yarn at Joann's. The color is called Light Gray and it has 18 yards on it. For this tutorial we will also be using a large eye needle, stitch markers that lock, and a pair of scissors. Before we actually start working on our scarf, I wanted to show you a little bit about how this yarn works. If you notice that if you lay it down flat, you, some of your loops are going one way, some are going another. Just twist them till they all go into the same direction. When we have yarn coming from our skein, it is called the working yarn. Our foundation yarn is down here that will actually be considered our project. We will be using two separate stitches in this scarf. So I will show you how to make the knit stitch and the purl stitch. To go from side to side, we will take our working yarn and go the same direction without having to take our work and flip it over. It is similar to knitting, but it is not um, done in the same fashion. As you notice on the loopity loops uh, band for the yarn, it says no needles, knitting needles, and no crochet hooks. You're using your hands the whole time. So to make our knit stitch, after you place the number of stitches that you're going to use for your project, you would take the next loop and come up from the back and pull it up through the center. The second one, so the second loop would go into your loop on your left side from the back up through to the center. Okay, and you would bring your working yarn over here to make it a little bit easier to follow through. Now you notice a little bit on these um, these yarns here, there is a separation between the loops. You want to try and bring your loop all the way to the bottom so that it will pull it up and it'll tighten um, the work up to the separation line. So you'll notice here that as we've done this, I haven't really pulled it through, but if you pull it all the way through, it will come out and it will lay flat. Okay, so to continue on on our knit stitch, let's take our next loop on the working yarn and on the foundation, come up from behind to the front and pull that loop through. And for our last one of our sample, pull it up and through. Be careful when making this thing. Sometimes, I've done it myself, you will skip a loop and then you'll have to either uh, choose to go back and take it out or cut it <laughs> and tie it up. So this particular four stitches we've created what is called the knit stitch. We have brought the loop from the back up to the front. Now to go on to our next row, we do not chain one, we do not do anything fancy with the stitch. We just take the next loop from our working yarn and we're going to do a knit stitch again. Okay, and then pull it all the way up. And we'll finish this knit row so that we can get the basic understandings of this as well. So take the next loop from your working yarn, which is in my left hand, and I'm going to pull it up from the bottom to the next loop on my project, and then continue across. If you don't pull your loops tight every time, it's okay. Just when you get to the end of the row, take it and pull them up and they will eventually, after pulling them up, lay flat. 
so here we have the knit stitch. Let's move on to the purl stitch. To make a purl stitch, you're going to take your working yarn and bring it in front of your work. Making the knit stitch, it was in the back, so now we're going to bring it to the front. So we're going to take the next loop on the working yarn coming from the skein, and we're going to go through the center on the top of the foundation and push it to the back. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing with the next one from the front to the back. You see how we're getting like a different loop instead of this flat one? We get this little bar going across. So we'll take our next loop from our working yarn. Here's our foundation. We're going to push it right through the center from the front to the back. And do the same from the front to the back. Okay, so if we pull our working yarn out of the way and then tighten up all these loops, bring all those, the little loop coming across, pull it down. You now see that we have a different stitch. Here these are like long stitches. This one's now short. Okay? So to do the purl stitch, again, coming back this way, we just take our yarn and we're going to bring it across the front and we're going to do the same thing. Go from the front to the back. So here's number one, from the front to the back. We want the next working yarn from the front to the back, and from the front to the back. And here's at the end of that row, just tighten everything up, and you can see our, t our second purl stitch row. Now if you want to go back to your knit stitch, you bring your working yarn behind, and you take your next loop, go into that first one on your project, come up from behind, and then pull your ends. Here's our sample with the knit stitch, the two rows of purl stitch, and the two rows of knit stitch again. And these are the two stitches we will be using in our project. Now to add a little bit more about our stitch markers, we will use two colors. One will be for the front when you crisscross it over, and one will be for the back. That way you won't overlook your stitches or your loops and make sure that each one of them will get done. So let's continue on. Let's go ahead and start our scarf project. So when using this loopity loop yarn, you want to go ahead and separate the band from your yarn and we're not going to do the same as we would with a normal skein of yarn. You want to work your yarn from the outside of the skein going inward. If you try to find the center pull, which I really don't recommend, it may make this turned into a jumbled mess. So for using this loop yarn because it is so thick it's best to go ahead and start from the outside of the skein. And because of starting and, and stopping our rows, we want to use the same yarn. So in using that, we want to cut the first three loops 
so that we can use that extra yarn uh, for sewing uh, weaving in the end. So when you find your yarn make sure it's kind of flat and then take your scissors and go in between the, the loop and kind of separate all that yarn and then go ahead and cut it. Okay. Now if you have a loop that looks like it could be twisted over or something try to untwist it and then separate the little fluff I guess it's called chenille but I can call it little fluff so you can understand it better and you'll see that little white braid in there that's what we're trying to cut the braid is strong enough and it will hold up for whatever project you make so I have one more that I would like to cut so we'll go ahead and separate this and make sure our little fluff doesn't crisscross over each other and cut the last one Okay. now that we have that this will be our tie that we will tie in when we're done let's go ahead and start our scarf the cable pattern that we're using will take up 10 loops and on each side of our cable we will use four loops for each side so if we total that up it does come to 18 loops so let's go ahead and count I'm over here on my left side I'm going to count over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. So at our 18th one, we know um, our next loop will go in. So let's go ahead. We're going to start with two rows of the knit stitch. So the knit stitch comes up from the bottom to the top. And if you want, you can take your working yarn and pull it across and make sure you get each loop. Sometimes you can miss a loop. I've done it before and I've had to go back and take that loop and <laughs> take that row apart. It was no fun. So continue across with our knit stitch of bringing the loop up from the back and making sure that the loop is stretched all the way to the end. When you get done with this row, you will have 18 loops. I'll see you then. Please pause your video. So at the end of our first row, I'm probably going to sound like a book, broken record, but please count your loops to make sure that you have 18. I will be saying that many times because I want to make sure that you are successful in completing this project. So we've completed one row of knit stitch. We're going to do one more row. So as before, like we did in our sample, our very next loop will go through the first loop as we head back this way. So after you put your first loop in there, you can take your working yarn and bring it across and go ahead and place the next loop in the next loop coming up from the bottom to the top. Go ahead and do your 18 loops. I'll meet you at the other end of the row. Please pause your video. So let's begin row one. I'm encouraging you to please pull out your stitch markers. I have two green and two blue. I also like for you to, if you use particular stitch markers to make sure that they do lock so that they don't fall apart on you. If you choose to use scrap yarn that will work very well and help you in the the cabling part of our stitch. Now before you move on to any row another suggestion is to make sure that you pull some yarn from your skein so that you have enough to work with. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do two knit stitches. So here's one 
and two. Now you remember your purl stitches, so that means we're going to bring it forward. We're going to go in between the last uh, stitch or loop that you just put in, and you want to go in between the next loop that you're going to be working. So we want to grab the next loop on our working yarn and go from the front to the back. There's one. Grab the next loop and go two. So what we've done was we've done two knit stitches and two purl stitches. Now take your yarn, go in between, take your loops and go in between those two next two loops right there and now we're going to do two knit stitches. So here's one and two. And stop right there. Let's go back, stretch out our loops, make sure that they're in there nice and snug. We don't have to worry about them coming out. Okay, and now we're going to pull out our stitch markers. The next two loops I would like for you to place one color on and loop three and four place your second color on. All right. So we're going to take the blue loops. In my case I have the blue and we're going to pull them over the top of the green ones. So here we got these two, we're going to pull them over the top. So these two blue ones are going to end up between the last green and the first loop with no stitch marker on it. So go ahead and take those. Now everything's going to shift, even your bottom here is going to look kind of wonky, but it'll be okay. So bring it on over, take those two blue loops, and place them on the other side of the green loops. Okay, so here I have my two green loops over here and my two blue loops over on the other side. Now it's going to be hard at first until you get the hang of this, but you're going to find it's not as difficult as it really looks. Okay. Now let's go back to our last loop, which is this one here. That means the next loop will be what goes in, and we're going to be making knit stitches. So we're going to take our working yarn and the first green loop, I mean the first green stitch marker, you're going to come up from behind and pull it through. Now follow for your second loop, and it's going to come up through the second green loop. Are you with me? <laughs> you notice that your, your two blue loops haven't been touched yet. Okay, now stretch them across. Now the next loop, after your two stitch markers there, is going to go into the first blue And the next one is going to go into the second blue. Are you done cussing at me now? <laughs> it's not hard, it's just a little clumbersome. Now, our repeat is over four rows, and um, this, this crisscrossing is only over two rows. So, be gentle with me. <laughs> so we stretch these two out and what I'd like for you to do is take your green stitch marker and place it on that outside green loop. The one just that you just put above it. 
Now this is only for the beginning. Once you get the hang of it and understand how the stitching lies and works, you're going to find that you won't need the stitch markers. But it does help a whole lot. So on our blue ones, here's where our blue marker is and here's our loop. Let's go ahead and move the, the stitch marker up to that new loop we just put in. Okay, so that's our first crisscross. <laughs> we got one more set. <laughs> I know, I know. So, go ahead and pull out some more stitch markers. Mine are from a uh, boy. I like these. I think they work very well. Okay, so after all of this here, let's push all of this aside. We're not worried about the working yarn or anything. We need to mark our stitches again. So the first two will get blue. And the next two will get green. So all of this blue and stuff that we did before, forget about those two. We're on these two now. So we're going to take these new blue ones that we just put in and we're going to crisscross them over those green ones as we did before. All right, then we're going to go back. Here's my last blue one. So here's the next working loop. And we're going to put it through that first green one. We're going to get out the second loop on our working yarn and go through the second loop that has the green stitch marker. It'll all lie flat, trust me. <laughs> the next row you're going to say, oh, this was easy. <laughs> okay, now our third loop, we're going to put it in our first blue one. And then our fourth loop here, we're going to put it in our second blue one. Okay, now let's go ahead and move our stitch markers up to the loop above it. I do hope you don't get frustrated with this. I do hope you work with it. And I hope I'm explaining it to you so well. I was so excited when I thought that this would work so well for this loop yarn. Because uh, I used to knit at one time years ago. But I always hated doing the cable stitch because of all the extra little tools you had to have. And I thought with these loop yarns, as big as they are, this should work wonderfully and it seems to be doing very well. Okay, at the end of our row you notice we have our four loops. Remember what we did over here? We ended with two purl stitches and started with two knits. So that's what we're going to do next. We're going to take our working yarn, we're going to bring it forward because we want the two purl stitches. Here's our last with the stitch marker that we raised up. Here's our last stitch, so our next loop will go into, of the four, the first one. So this is a purl stitch. And then our second loop will go into the second one here. That's our second purl stitch. Now we're going to take our working yarn and we're going to go between the third and the second stitch here and take our working yarn to the back and then the next loop will go up from the back and the next loop on the last one here will go up from the back. Alright, so let's go back and make sure 
that we count our stitches to make sure we have the right amount and also pull as much forward as you can to make sure that these stretches these stitches are stretched out to their max position okay so go ahead and do that make sure it's all nice and pulled out and double check your stitches across to make sure you have 18 moving on to row 2 so row 2 consists of the full knit stitch. Ah, oh, I know you're saying that. Ah, oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> so, our next loop on our working yarn is over here. We're going to go ahead and pull it up, pull it through. Our second one gets the next working stitch loop. Okay, now we have our purl stitch. So we need to bring it forward, and we're going to go from the front to the back, and the next one front to the back, and then take your working yarn and pull it to the back. Now this whole row of cable up to our purl stitch, so for the next 10 stitches, is a knit stitch. Yay! <laughs> so our next loop, you want to grab that first blue one from the back to the front. Our second blue one, try not to mix them up, this one goes, this blue one's over here. Our second blue one from the back to the front and we'll move those stitch markers in just a minute. Now our next set of colors is the green ones. Now your green ones are in the bottom here. Make sure you don't crisscross them, just let them lay flat and you can see where they have to go. So our next working loop will go from the back to the front and our second green one here goes from the back to the front. Okay, if you notice we got blue, green, now we're going to do blue and then we'll do green again. So we finished the last green one. We're going to pick up that first blue one. I see it looks a little twisted to me. So let's pop it through back to front. Our second blue one back to front. We got two green ones. Make sure they don't crisscross each other. And then our working loop back to front. Our last green one back to front. Now we have two knit stitches here. That's part of the 10 for our cable. Okay, so let's pull them all forward or snug them up to make sure that they go up. Okay, now we have our purl stitch. So between this knit stitch here and our purl that we need to, bring your working yarn forward. And with the next loop, front to back, the second purl stitch, with our working yarn front to back okay then take our yarn and go in between the knit stitches here and then with our next loop you know the hard part about all of this is because it's all the same color but I'm hoping that with the camera as close as it is is that it shows um, and you understand what needs to be done here. Okay, so that completes row two. Count your stitch loops. Make sure you have 18, not 19, 20, or 17, or whatever. 
you want to make sure you have 18. At the end of this row, I would like for you to take your stitch markers and move them up to the next one so that you can see where your next loops are. If you feel comfortable enough that you don't need to move your stitch markers up, that's fine because on our next row for row three, we will be crisscrossing our loops again. I know it's kind of hard to see on camera, but you can kind of see how the loops are starting to go this way. The first couple of rows will not actually show the braid until we get into maybe the third or fourth set. You can see the full braid. Make sure that you pull these loops up tight every time. Otherwise it will start to cause it to bunch in and then you'll have a really hard time trying to keep it flat and uh, the, the cable braid itself. So let's move on. This will start row three. So to begin row three, before we move on, I would like for you to take your stitch markers, the, the last two before the four stitches here, and move them to, if you count this direction, stitch five and six. So moving on to row three, we're going to take and bring the first two up with our knit stitch. And then bring our working yarn towards us and do our purl stitches in the next two stitches. And then take our working yarn and go back in between our last stitch and our stitch with our new stitch marker in it. Okay, and be sure to snug these guys up. We'll snug them up even better at the end of the row, but you want to make sure they're up. Now, these two blue ones and these two green ones are going to change differently than from the row before. If you remember the row before, we knitted two and then we crisscrossed and crisscrossed. Well, this row, row three, will be a little different. We're going to crisscross, well, crisscross the opposite way, crisscross the opposite way, and then knit two at the end. So we're going to take our two blue ones and instead of going on the top we're going to go on the bottom. So we're going to take our two green ones and pull them over the top of the two blue ones. And then with our next loop in our working yarn, make sure we grab the right one, here's our purl stitch right here, so we need the next loop we're going to go into the first loop and the next loop goes into the next green loop of, of, of my coloring I should say. Now we have our two blue ones. Try not to uh, twist your loops. So on the working loop, here's our last one, here's our working loop right here it's going to come up from behind on the first blue one and come up from behind on the second blue one. And then we want to pull them through and we can move the stitch markers when we're done with this row. Okay, And now that our stitch markers are already here, our blue ones, as what we've just done, are going to go underneath our green ones. So our green ones are coming to the right and our blue ones are going to the left. 
so making sure my loops not twisted okay here's my last loop on my blue one I'm gonna pick up the next loop and come from the bottom up and on the next loop I'm gonna come on the next the second green one and come from the bottom up now here's my next working loop I'm going to pull my two blue ones forward making sure they're not twisting or overlapping each other and I'm going to take this working loop and go behind and bring it forward and the second one I'm going to go behind and bring it forward okay we can start pulling some of these guys forward here and then we have the two loops left let's go back to where our blue one is and here's our next working loop and we're just going to do a regular knit stitch in the next two stitches okay and then we're going to bring our yarn forward towards us for our purl stitches okay so here's our next working loop front to back our next one front to back okay so I'm still holding on to it go in between those two stitches so the next loop is coming doing our knit stitch from the bottom up the next one bottom up congratulate yourself <laughs> we've made it to the other side now count your loops make sure you have 18 pull everybody up nice and snug make sure that they're all nice and flat and I do recommend taking your stitch markers and moving them forward to the next stitch um, so that way you know what you have and where it's at because with these crisscross stitching um, in my samples yes I did mess up and that's <laughs> that's the reason why I really recommend using these stitch markers to help you until you understand it on how this um, no knitting needle uh, process works okay so go ahead and finish the rest of your stitch markers and pull up all your loops nice and snug and count like I said, a broken record, count, 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 count. That's the, so, that's the secret to all of this. Count your, count your stitches. And we will proceed with row four in just a second. Slowly as this is emerging, you can see the cabling. Um, it could be my lighting. I can see the cabling. I hope you can see it in yours as well. Row four, this is the last row of our four row repeat. All right, after that difficult round again, <laughs> I hope you find it to be easier. You know, a lot of times um, practice does help make it better. And because this is um, a small enough piece, I think that you will do just fine with it. Um, let's move on do number four our first stitch with our working yarn we're coming up from behind and making two knit stitch okay sometimes it helps to hold on to that last one bring your yarn forward and we're going to do two purl stitches here's my next working yarn we're going to pull that through and pull through the second one. Then we're going to take our working yarn and go back to the ba to the back of it. Here's our last one that we just did. That means this one is our next one. And we're going to go behind and do the knit stitch across the whole cable. So the first two is a knit. Here's our two blue ones. The guys are from behind this time. 
Let's find our next working loop. Come up from behind and behind again. Then we have our green ones. The first one, which is on my left. The second one. Okay. Now we're going to do our blue stitch markers again. Here's one. Here's two. And we have our green again. There's one and here's two. Now before you move on, double check to see you should have your two purl stitches and your two knit stitches left. So we want to bring our working yarn forward in between the last stitch and the first purl stitch front to the back, front to the back and then take our yarn and go back bring the next loop from the back to the front and we have completed this row with after two knit stitches. Go ahead and pull out your stitches, count your stitches and then we'll make a review and go over this process one more time. After I've completed row four I've moved my stitch markers to the outside loops. My suggestion is to do that as well. For going back to round one, you'll notice that our last two stitches here need to be moved to the last two over here. So go ahead and remove your first two and place them at the last two of the cable. You should have four loops left. This will be row one again and I will go a little bit quicker and now you will start to see your pattern emerge even more. So remember while we are doing these next four rows I will go pretty much at a regular speed but also um, slow enough for you to follow. Remember our first two stitches at the beginning of our row is the two knit stitches. Bring it forward and we're going to do two purl stitches. take our working yarn and go to the back. And remember, count, count, count. That's the most important thing. So, our first two stitches, because we've already moved our stitch markers to the, um, the end of the 10 for the cable, will just be two knit stitches. So, up from behind. And I do encourage you to take your time with all these loops. Sometimes you might have to flip it over to make sure that you don't have any excess loops. That's part of it. <laughs> and um, you don't want to have missed a loop or anything. Okay, so here we are at our braid. The blue, the first set, will go over the top. Now sometimes if you're wondering how do I determine, well, the, this one went to the left down here, and you see here to the right, well this one needs to start going to the right so that we can have that weave. So if we go over, this will be under, so this will be over. So remember as we did in row one, take these two, go over the green. Now with our working yarn, the first green one gets the first loop of the working yarn, the second green one gets the second loop. Don't forget to move your stitch markers after you've completed this row. Our first gets the third and our second gets the fourth. Okay, and now here we are at our second set. 
So here we are with our blue and our green. And our blue will go over the top again, as before. Remember to try and keep your um, stitches when you pull them over separated. So here's our first, and here's our second of the green. And now we will do the first of the blue and the second of the blue. Okay, you see how quick that went? So let's pull them into the front and our next loop will be our pearl, pearl one, pearl two, take it to the back, knit one and knit two. Now you see if you did pretty much the same speed as me we took about two and a half three minutes to complete this row. I encourage you to count and double check to make sure you have all your stitches there and then pull everybody forward move your stitch markers up and we will move on to row two. Okay we're going to do a quick on row two Remember that it is all um, just your basic knit stitch through here, except for the two pearls on either side of that. Go ahead and do this all the way across. I'll meet you at the other side. Please pause your video. Moving on to row three. Can you see the design now? It's starting to show our weave. Now we're going to take our stitch markers. Remember? Place it back onto our first two. And then we're going to start our row again. So our first two is the knit stitch. Then we have our two purl stitch. Take your working yarn to the back. Okay. Now our two blue ones will go under the two green ones. So our green will come on top. And our first one will get our next working yarn, which is this one. <laughs> Yes, you do have to look at it twice. I also think that working in a bright light is really good for this loop yarn because sometimes it's just too easy to um, not be able to see some of the loops very well. Okay, and then our two under ones. We have our first one. Yes, it may seem like you're going around it, but that's what's pulling it in. And then our second one. Okay, and now we're going to go to our next two. So we'll take our blue, goes under our green, and we're going to place the next working yarn. Okay, that one got used, so here's the next working yarn uh, from the bottom. Do our green ones first. And then the next two, yes, I did drop them. <laughs> the next two is the blue ones. Okay, and see how this will go pretty quick once you get the basic understanding of how this pattern works. And then you'll see here our last two will get the two knit stitch. And then we bring it forward and we have our two purl stitches one purl two purl bring your yarn to the back one knit and two knit go ahead and pull all your loops forward double check your stitch count and we will then move on to row four and now for row four we will do our knit stitch, 
purl two, our knit stitch, purl two, and then the two last knit stitches. Remembering at the end of all of this, you're going to want to move these first two stitch markers to the last two when you start row one. So let's go ahead and start that. So after completing row four, you can see how we are definitely getting a pretty view of our braid. Uh, being that this is um, still in the process, I will show you how to cast off at this level. Um, I plan on making this a full scarf, so um, don't stop here. Continue repeating steps rows one through four until you get to the length that you need. I have used quite a bit of my ball, but I have not used all of it. Um, so I'm going to show you how to cast off and how to weave in the end from here at the beginning. Now my biggest and first suggestion is to please place your stitch markers in to this, um, these steps here, or these last loops of the row. That will make it so that it will be very noticeable for you and you will not skip the stitch that you need. So please do that and then we will continue on. So to start the finishing rows, what we will do first is like we did at the beginning, we will make two rows of solid knit stitches. So everything is coming from the back to the front. Make sure you don't skip any loops. Okay, so here's my first loop. See how that helps find quickly the stitch you need. Now here's the under loops. So we want to make sure we get all of those. Okay? And continue across. Make sure that you have 18 loops and um, pull them all the way out. So after your two rows of your knit stitch, let's go ahead and um, do the cast off. You will take the first loop here on the end and the second loop. And you will take the second loop and go inside that first loop. And then you will just basically repeat. The loop on your left goes inside the loop on your right. The loop on the left goes inside. And you will continue this all the way across. And you see how it finishes the edge? It will not come undone. When you get to the end, you'll, if you have, depending on how much you have left, you want to have at least three loops so that way you can take that last one and come through the loops and then you can go ahead and with your leftover string you weave it in and out and come back and forth so that it will be um, not unraveling again. I do hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial, that you do make it, and that it keeps you warm. This yarn here is extremely soft, and I am so glad that they came up with this kind of yarn. I actually enjoy working with the loop yarn for knitting projects than having to use knitting needles. So, as before, thank you so much for watching. If you would like to share what you have made with me, I am on Facebook and Instagram under Garnet is a Jewel. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.